What is going on guys? Welcome to my Diana guide. Let's get started. Diana's passive is Moon Silver Blade. Diana permanently has 20% bonus attack speed and cleaves nearby enemies for 20 to 250 damage based on her level. It also has an 8% AP ratio and does the damage on every third basic attack within 3.5 seconds. Diana's Q is Crescent Strike. Diana unleashes a bolt of lunar energy that travels in an arc, dealing magic damage to enemies hit and afflicting them with moonlight for 3 seconds, granting sight of them for the duration. Diana's W is Pale Cascade. Diana shields herself for up to 5 seconds and creates 3 spheres that orbit her for the duration, detonating upon contact with an enemy and dealing magic damage to nearby enemies upon detonation. If all 3 spheres detonate, Pale Cascade's shield is reapplied, stacking with its original shield, and its duration is refreshed. Diana's E is Moonfall. Diana reveals and draws in all nearby enemies to her location, slowing them for 2 seconds afterwards. Diana's ultimate is Lunar Rush. Diana dashes to an enemy target location, dealing magic damage. If the target is afflicted with Moonlight, the effect is consumed on all enemies and Lunar Rush's cooldown is reset. Diana is a fairly easy mechanical champion, easy to learn but hard to master. If you want to become great with her, you're going to need practice, but it's not hard to pick her up and be decent at her. Her base mechanics are pretty straightforward, but if you do want to become an above average Diana player, here are a few things you should know and or learn how to do. First off, if you stand next to an enemy while you're using an R, you will actually get placed behind them. This is good for chasing enemies and making sure they can't get away. All of your W orbs count towards a stack of Thunderlords, so use that to your advantage when going in for a trade. Similar to Lee Sin's Kick Flash, Diana can Q Flash as well as E Flash to surprise your enemy and reduce the time they have to react. When trading in lane, try to get two stacks of your passive before trading to get some extra damage off at the start of the trade. While in the jungle, use your QR combo to easily jump over walls and get around much faster. You can also use your QR combo to get over Dragon Pit and Baron Pit. For more info and an in-depth tutorial on these spots, click the video link in the description. It takes the same amount of time for your Q to land as it does for your R to travel to your enemy, so using your QR at the same time, you'll still get the reset on your R. When ganking or just fighting in general, be cautious when using your R without your Moonfall passive on the enemy. Sometimes it's better to wait for your Q to come back up rather than trying to burst them down with your second R just for them to flash away and you not get the kill or have to flash after them. Your E can be used to cancel channeled abilities such as Fiddlesticks Drain, Lucian's Calling, and Misfortune's Bullet Time. The laning phase is pretty straightforward with Diana. Her real power comes after level 6 and she can often get poked down by ranged champions. Usually you'll want to stay away from trades and just farm until level 6. Use your Q to farm minions from a safe range and your W to block as much damage as possible, just don't waste too much of your mana. Against the melee champs, she actually doesn't do too bad, your W is a great way to win trades, but again, your kill potential isn't the highest until level 6, because they can just flash away. Once you hit level 6, you can really start to put the hammer down if you haven't messed up yet. Wait till the enemy uses a high cooldown or important spell, then go in for a QR trade or a QRW trade if you need the shield. Usually if you do this enough times, you'll eventually be able to go all in and kill them. In that case, you'll want to go Q, R, W, E, get as much autos in as you can, and then follow up with your last R to kill them, or follow them when they flash away. Don't forget to manage your mana, and get two stacks of your passive before trading to get some extra damage. If you go in with a Q, R, and their jungler shows up, you might be able to R to some minions to escape, so don't forget to keep an eye out on the wave. Let's talk about the jungle. In the jungle, you mainly want to focus on getting level 6, that's when your ganks become much more powerful. I'll make a video on a level 6 clear in 6 minutes. If you're viewing this video in the future, be sure to check the description for the link to the video. When you do go in for a gank, try to save your second ultimate until your Q is back up so you can get the reset again. However, if you can just kill them with your second R, go ahead and do that. You also might want to save your R to see if they flash, so don't blow it right away if you don't have the reset ready. After a successful gank, try to push the tower and get as much damage on the tower as possible. Diana's passive is great for taking towers, and you'll also be denying farm to the enemy laner if you push out the wave. Hopefully you've done well until this point. Diana's high burst damage makes her roams pretty strong, so try to roam to other lanes and get the snowball rolling. If you're in the jungle, try to stay on top of the objectives and encourage your team to war and try to keep pressure on the map and get as many dragons as possible. In these early team fights, try to focus on killing their carries. If you've done well up until this point, you should be able to kill their ADC or mid laner. You're an all-in champion, so once you go in, there's no coming out. Make sure if you start a fight, you can take at least one with you, and make sure your team is ready to back you up. If your team starts a fight and you're not ready, try to analyze the situation. Is there anything you can do to make the fight in your favor? Maybe you can clean up their backline, or maybe you should just peel for your carries and that you still have live on your team. You also want to watch who you're focusing. If the support is stuck on the ADC and you can't kill them, try to switch to another target or just try to get them to run away from the fight. 
If you're in a lane and you can kill the enemy, but they're just a little bit too far away, you can QR to a minion, then R to the enemy to kill them. This trick is very useful in lane and in gang. Sometimes getting a surprise jump like this can get your team a nice 4 5v4 in your favor. Late game, you can be very useful in many different ways or just useless. You should know how the game is going by now and need to know your role to win. If your team fights are doing well and you can continue to kill their carries, continue to do so after a good fight, continue to take objectives, and also try to out-rotate the enemy team. One thing I like doing if I'm ahead is split pushing. Diana is a super strong split pusher late game with her passive. She can easily clear waves and take towers. Booting Nasher's Tooth, Lich Bane, and Death Cap will allow you to take towers in just a few auto attacks. If you can 1v1 anyone on the enemy team, you can split push while your team is on the other side of the map. If they send one person for you, you can kill them and then continue to push. If they really want to stop you, they'll have to send more than one person, which will give the rest of your team a 4v3 in your favor. Make sure they know when and not to fight, and make sure they let you get in position before sieging for an objective. If you're behind and your team is losing bad, this is where it gets pretty tough with Diana. You might have to build slightly tanky. You never take an even 5v fight if you're behind. Just clear waves and wait for them to make a mistake. Either get a pick or steal an objective when the enemy team is out of position. Well, looks like that is it for my Diana guide. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I know it might have sounded slightly robot-y and kind of boring. I'll try to work on that for the next one, but I really wanted to get this out because I just, I got inspired today and I just wanted to do it. And I kind of just, as I was going along, I kind of was like um, writing up a script for all my, all my points that I wanted to cover in the video. I don't think I missed much. I know there's a few uh, tips and tips and tricks I probably missed that I'll definitely be adding for the next one. But the next one I do, um, I'll definitely, you know, try to spice it up a little bit and make sure I don't miss anything too important. I'll try to include, I'll include everything in this video and more, you know. But uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you're new around here. And yeah, let me know your thoughts on the on the guide and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.